Belgium, a country famous for its waffles, its chocolates and frites mayonnaise, but also a country famous for one of the fastest and most daunting circuits in Formula One. Craig, the circuit of Spa-Francorchamps has some really unique characteristics and that high speed means something very different for the aerodynamics of the car is required. Absolutely. The thing with Spa is that you're going at such fast speeds through these fast corners that you don't need big wings to create enough downforce. You can actually get away with a much smaller wing. Now that creates less downforce but also less drag which really helps you along those long straights as well. So all the teams will tailor their aero package to suit this specific circuit but also this will then carry on to having benefits at subsequent races like Monza. Yeah, and you're seeing some of the teams experimenting with not the lowest level of downforce on their wings, but also taking pre-existing wings to save a bit of money and cutting them up to make them suit the circuit of Spa-Francorchamps. And you can see this really clearly. We've seen Haas do this already this season. If you look at their rear wing, they've actually taken a cutter to it, and this is no exaggeration, and cut out a big chunk of the rear wing to reduce the drag level. This wing originally, when it was first raced, and I'm not sure which Grand Prix that would have been at, would have carried on along here, and they've just literally lopped off a large portion of the wing. Now, it sounds a little bit sort of, well, sketchy, but actually, Craig, they'll have tried a lot of different solutions on how to cut it like this in the wind tunnel, won't they? Yeah, they'd have tried loads and loads of iterations of this, changing the angle of that cutaway. And it's possible really because of the structure of the wing. Normally you think of a wing profile, and if you could kind of draw it here, you would expect it to be just one big open shape. In fact, what you find is that the wing ends up being very thin at the end here. So it makes it very easy for them to then cut it away to make a smaller wing with the same effective mould, which means it's so much cheaper for them to produce different variations with different downforce levels. Now, Haas tried something similar to this earlier in the season, but another Ferrari-powered team, Alfa Romeo, have come up with a very similar solution for the back end of their car. You can see again where the original wing would have gone along through the middle of the car, even down to cutting through some of those <laughs> FIA marker stickers you can see running there. But you can see the cutout running along Long here. Now, I think what you're seeing here, Craig, is they haven't gone whole hog on going for a super low drag rear wing. They feel Sector 2 at Spa needs, needs a bit more downforce, and I think that's the way they're going with this. It is, and it's also a little bit being pragmatic. You have this pivot mounting at the middle here, so they've decided not to cut that away and have the wing potentially flopping. So they've just added that little bump in that cutaway section just to keep the mechanics of the wing working. Now, some teams have decided to spend their aerodynamic test budget and their actual financial budget in a different way, and they've gone the whole hog on introducing bespoke low-drag rear wings. And one of those teams is Aston Martin. Now, Craig, this wing is Aston Martin's lower-drag rear wing, and I'll say that deliberately, but something I've noticed as a trend for a lot of these wings is this sort of dished section in the middle of the wing. What's going on here? Because we used to see these quite often, but they went away, but now it seems they're back. So this is all about creating downforce with a minimum amount of drag. So you can see the wing section in the middle here is at its steepest. This is where the wing is creating most of the downforce. Now, if you see then this section at the edge here, it's much shallower. So that's creating less downforce, but what it's also doing is creating less of a vortex at the wing tip. What you see is those vapour trails like you see this weekend in the damp conditions. Now that vapour trail is actually creating drag. So the less downforce you create on these outer sections of wing, the less drag you get, but you have the middle bit creating the downforce. You get the perfect mix of downforce and low drag. Now you'll notice that Aston Martin has decided not to bring its wing extensions we saw at previous races that sat at the end of the wing here. That's quite simply because this is a low drag rear wing. But it's not the lowest drag rear wing Aston Martin have bought to Belgium. The lowest drag rear wing is this version that's seen on Sebastian Vettel's car in the garage during the pre-free practice one show and tell session. You can see how much more extreme the upper section is along here and the lower section as well. Note how it kicks up towards the out outer edge there. That's something we haven't seen before. And it seems to me that Aston Martin reckon there's a lot of performance to be had from the rear wing of their car because that's where a lot of this development budget is being spent. Yeah, this is unusual to go so far on a wing like this. They really want to get top speeds, low drag, and I think we will see this wing much more at Monza potentially than we would at Spa. But it's really interesting that they seem to have kept the original end plate, which is quite unusual this year with the shapes that you have. 
but then just added this different section in here. But that does require you know, tooling and moulds and new parts, and that all adds to the budget. So this is a big budget option for a team that's already done quite a lot to their car this year. Well, up and down the grid, there's a huge number of different rear wing solutions on display. Pretty much every team has bought a new version of the rear wing, and some of them have greater and lesser success with them. And it's worth taking a deeper dive through all of those rear wings through the season as well to see how they evolve. But for the Belgian Grand Prix, those specifications are pretty much locked in, but the weather could play a major factor on what wings the teams decide to use as the weekend goes on.